Yes, you and I do indeed drive our fair share of performance cars, but they are always on offer in one of two options. Option A, something that is extremely powerful, but very heavy. Or option B, something that is not so powerful, but very light. What if there was an option C, something that is extremely powerful, but very light? Okay, so now that we've opened the door to an option C, what exactly is today's option C? Well, it's an Uticon, they call it an STO. I am going to butcher the Italian language here. Super Trofeo Oglomoto. And the idea is a track car for the street. That does sound very strange, but it is based on something we've already driven. And that was that Oticon rear wheel drive that was a convertible. In that case, this one is a hard top. And it's the same 5.2 liter V10. There it was 610 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque. Here there is a nice bump, 640 horsepower, 417 pound-feet of torque. Same transmission, seven-speed dual clutch. This one only on offer as rear drive. Can I say mille grazie because it transforms these cars. Go and watch that episode if you have to before this one to understand how big of a difference the rear drive makes over the all wheel drive. Now something special to this one, because it's rear wheel drive and because it's the STO, it is fitted with rear wheel steering. So kind of like we've experienced in the 992s, it does change the way this car drives. It makes it a bit more sharp, I think is the best way to describe it. We'll talk more about that later. And then there's the fuel economy. Shall we discuss that? 13, 18, 15 combined. But really what you and I have to discuss is two more things. Number one, performance figures, and that would be a zero to 60 of three seconds. So not the fastest thing out there, but man oh man is that respectable and a VMAX of 193 miles an hour. But something that works in conjunction with that is the arrow. And notice I don't say active arrow, so it's not like we've seen in like a GT3 or a 911 Turbo where things move by themselves. This is very manual because this is very much based on the Super Trofeo GT3 car. So like for example, that big wing in the back, it is adjustable, but you have to get your wrenches out to adjust it and it does increase the downforce by 53%. So I've got a bit of a surprise for you today, and yes, it's more than a Golf livery blue Lamborghini. Rather, it's a Golf livery blue Lamborghini that weighs 2,952 pounds. Yes, you heard me correct, less than 3,000 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,339 kilograms. For a point of reference, the last Lamborghini Otacon you and I drove was like 400 pounds heavier, maybe a little bit less than that. And another point of reference, Porsche 911s, even some of the latest ones they make, about 400 pounds heavier with that. Oh God. Oh my God. Hold oh. <laughs> Okay, this is not a track. We have to slow down a little bit. Uh, this is a very old trick, not a Lamborghini trick, not a Ferrari trick. This is a trick from Hethel. You add lightness. Uh, I think they should take the name off this car. This is not Santa Bolognese speaking. This is Colin Anthony Bruce Chapman speaking. But this is something completely different. Power comes in at like 3,000 RPM. And it's not like a Taycan rip your face off. This is just, oh my God, there is so little car hanging off 600 horsepower, 640 horsepower. It's just ridiculous when you think of the weight. Is it like... A two-second car, no, there are faster cars than this, but the way this thing delivers power, it's very unusual. And the sound, Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, the sound. God, always love that 5.2 V10, but in a car that has lightweight glass, and it's made almost 100% of carbon fiber. God, that sound reverberates through it. Transmission identical to what we have experienced in previous Otacons, which is to say a good thing. One has complete control over this vehicle. There are not denied downshifts, which are, God, this, this is to another level. 
of Lamborghini. Like, I liked that rear-wheel drive Lamborghini Oticon we drove. Granted, I'm still a GT3 guy, but this, this is, this is disco to that techno. So you and I should put aside the propulsion system and focus on what makes this thing stand out. And that would be everything underneath it, as well as the wrapper. Let's start with what's underneath it. And there they build upon the existing Hodakon bits. And that would be double wishbone in the front, as well as in the rear. From there, they change the bushings. They say they are stiffer. I believe them. In the short time that I've been driving this thing, wow, is it a difference. And kind of an aside to this, they changed the tuning of the different modes you can have. There are three new modes, one for street, one for track, and one for rain. Uh, you and I have been doing this in the most basic mode, the street mode, and there it is even stiff for me. It will shake your intestines out if that's your thing. Uh, anyway, back to some of the other changes, and there are anti-roll bars. That's nothing new, but this one has specific anti-roll bars once again, uh, increasing the overall stiffness, I would argue less roll. Not that there was a lot of roll before, but this, it's completely flat cornering. There is no pitch squat diver roll whatsoever. Even in the street mode, in the regular Uracan that you and I drove the two wheel drive, there was maybe some movement, maybe some compliance. If a Lamborghini could have it, this, there's nothing, but then again, it's supposed to be a track car. Uh, then the brakes, 390 millimeters up front, 360 in the back, carbon ceramic. Now I can't honestly tell you there's an appreciable difference in braking performance between this and previous Oricons you and I have driven that were fitted with the carbon ceramic rotors. However, in speaking to the folks at Lamborghini, specifically the engineers, they say that this is all about fade reduction. So the idea is this is a track car, right? So you're gonna take this thing to a track and punish it all day, right? Well, that's why they changed the competition, at least if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, of the rotors themselves. Now that's all fine and good, but what the hell does that mean to you and I out on a road like this? Well, braking performance, or rather the importance of braking performance. You see, this, it's a very odd equation of vehicle. It is extremely powerful and very, very light, which makes the brakes significantly more important. And here, it's not so much the performance, it's the fact that you just know that the brakes can cash the checks that this unusual combination of body and engine can write. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the options game with one hell of a contestant. A Lamborghini that is meant for the street, but really is a track car, but still has a lot of dress up options. This one, the 2021 Lamborghini Uracon STO for a base price of $327,830. Put another way, that is almost a hundred large more than the Uracon Evo rear wheel drive spider we had, what, a couple months ago. Uh, then first we have to add the full livery exterior package. That gives you things like the option of the blue Laufey paint, which I specified a choice to drive a white car, gray car, a green car, this one. I wanted this one because of Gulf livery blue, uh, but that makes you pay $37,800. But to make it real Gulf livery blue, you need the orange, which means you have to get the contrast pack for an additional $4,000. Uh, then the carbon fiber pack, that's all the dress up, the carbon fiber in the front and back of the car, $21,600. These sports seats, which we experienced in that Evo rear wheel drive Oricon, they were wonderful, $7,200, wonderful. The factory lift system in the front, this should not be optional on a $330,000 car, but you do need it for $1,000. Then the painted calipers in black, Black, $1,400. Now at this point, one would think, hey, we've paid enough for paint. Well, you'd be wrong because we have to pay an additional $2,000 to have those wheels painted in a matte black. Then the STO trim Sportivo, that's the stickers on the side of the car, which I don't like, $3,300. Then something I love in cars like this, like GT3 kind of cars, a fire extinguisher. 
This one is almost double the price of the fire extinguisher in, say, GT3, $700. The Lamborghini on the seats, the embroidery, $800. The contrast stitching on the black part of the interior, $800. The dark chrome on the outside of the car, $8,600. Then the optional stitching. I had to ask Lamborghini what this is. So we already paid, what, $800 for contrast stitching? We got to pay an additional $200 if we want contrast stitch on the two-tone part of the interior, meaning the white parts of this interior. Then the ad personum package. It's not so much a package, think of it as a fee to customize the car, and that opens up or brings about more details to the car, $14,000. Now, admittedly, this ad persona thing is pretty expensive, but another neat trick that it brings to the table, it removes the carpeting from the car. It's basically suede on the floor of the car, and there are floor mats, but they're not carpet, they're carbon fiber. Then we dive back into the world of extra cost paint. The exterior contrast color, this would be the black roof, $2,000. Then you bought a track car for the street, so of course the US government, they need to have a word with you to the tune of $2,100 for gas guzzler tax. Then of course, you gotta get the car from Santa Agata Bolognese, and that does not come cheaply because it's not going to go in just a regular old covered wagon. $3,695 for a total retail price of $442,033. And that brings us to what I would argue is one of the more interesting aspects of this flavor of Uricon, and that would be the construction as well as the materials used in construction. Take a look at the front of the vehicle. There is no longer a frunk, rather there's a whole clip that flips forward, kind of like the flip top Cobra, hence the race car idea. Then in the back, there is no latch that opens up a hatch that reveals the engine. Rather, there's a lift-off panel, and both the front and the rear are unlocked with a key, not with a latch underneath the dashboard or in the door jam. So this is very much like those GT3 cars that Lamborghini campaigned all around the world. That's kind of the learning they put into this. On a street car, I, I think it's a neat party trick, but it's not a must-have. What is a must-have, and I find rather fascinating, is the materials used in construction. Here, yes, it's mainly carbon fiber, but again, according to the Lamborghini engineers, they've used less carbon in the construction of the carbon fiber, which lowers the overall weight of the body panels, which brings the weight of the vehicle down, but still maintains the stiffness, or really the strength of carbon fiber. This is something you and I need to look at, probably on an Inside the Moto Man Studio episode, so let's put a pin into that. So a little inside baseball. I went into this episode, like I do all my episodes, doing the research on the car before I get to the car, putting together an outline before I drive the car. So everything from a very cerebral point of view. So I knew it was a very light car that had 30 more horsepower over a car very similar to it we drove previously. But once I got behind the wheel, you quickly learn this is very different. And this is a guy that was into Lotus for many years, now into Porsches. So I really appreciate lightweight cars, but nothing with this kind of horsepower. As a basis of comparison, a car that is similar in weight to this one that we have driven recently has a third the horsepower, the Toyota GR86. So these just don't exist. And I guess that's why it's almost a half a million dollars. So that gets us to the wish list. I don't have much here. Maybe for a car that is this like custom built, Lamborghini could go out on a limb here and do the manual transmission. I know that's cliche to ask, but I'm thinking not only would it be something that would be unique to such a unique car, but I gotta believe it would impact the collector car value of this specific car in the short term as well as the long term. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All in Word, Moto Man TV All in Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I would once again humbly request your help with the algorithm. What does that mean? Subscribe, notifications, hitting like, but most importantly, sharing these episodes with all your friends 
on your socials. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.